man, I just gotta get the fuck out of my town and go to a different one because this one is just not helping me grow as a musician, as an artist. There's just not any opportunity here for me. And I just feel like if I go to another town, another city, another state, then I'll be able to actually thrive as an artist. And you know how many fucking times I've heard people say that? <laughs> Dude, I've heard people say that so many fucking times, and it's crazy. But I get where they're coming from. Because I live in an area where I'm about an hour away from a metropolitan city. And in my area, there's very few opportunities for performing live performances. All right. There's like, well, there was one venue that would have performances, but they kind of shut down. I don't know what the fuck happened. It was over the whole 2020 shit. But besides that, it's mainly just local bars, you know. And, uh, you know, like I said, you got to go an hour to the major metro area to get to some decent venues and stuff like that and high population areas and all that stuff. But I just recently had an artist say this to me. And it really got me thinking. I'm like, hey, look, I, I don't understand. You know what? It just got me thinking. Like... I get the whole performance aspect, okay? You can start making some decent money off of performancing. Performancing. You can start making some decent money off of performance, off of performing. And let me restart that. Look, I get it. You can start making some decent money off of performing. However, in order to make decent money off performing, you have to actually have a fan base, okay? You can't just show up to a bunch of strangers, perform, and expect to make bank off of the situation. You just can't. Even if you give them an amazing show, you give them an amazing show, well, now you've just earned some fans. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be fucking throwing money at you that day. However, if you perform and there's a lot of people in the crowd who are there for you who are wearing your shirts or something like that right then you're going to be able to make bank off of that performance off of that opportunity and see that's where a lot of artists mess up and i don't know if it's a lack of information or just that lottery ticket mentality that I've talked about on here before. For those of y'all not familiar, lottery ticket mentality is where they're like, you know, well, if I could just get that one thing, I'll be good, right? Lottery ticket mentality. If I just win the lottery, everything will be solved. And they, people use that in all kinds of things. You know, as humans, we look for that one shot, you know, that one pill that's just going to solve all of our problems. And a lot of times it's a poison pill. We don't know it. We don't realize it. And uh, it's that way a lot with performing. See, people, people know instinctively that, hey, look, doing shows, live performances, for one, it's a great feeling as an artist, right? To be up there performing in front of people and seeing their reaction and, and feeling that energy off of them, it's amazing, all right? I perform multiple times. And the bigger the crowd, the better it feels. Okay, now I've never done thousands of people before, okay? But I've heard people say thousands and tens of thousands of people is fucking insane. The feeling that you get from all that energy, from all those people, it's insane. But I do know that you could go to a show perfectly prepared. You can bring merch with you and business cards and, and all kinds of stuff, right? You can bring everything with you to capitalize off the opportunity, which a lot of artists don't. But you could. And you could show up, and there could be 40 people there. And most of the people are there for the other artists, not you. 
hardly anybody even knows of you. And you'll go there, you'll perform your ass off. And then after the show, you'll go home. And you might have gotten a couple more followers off of it. Maybe even got one or two fans down the road. But that's it. And see, a lot of artists, when they go and perform at their local spots, just to get some stage time, get some mic time, they think, all right, all right, this is going to be it. I'm going to go there. I'm going to rock out. And I'm going to slay the fucking crowd. Everybody's going to want to be my fan. And I'm going to start getting, you know, merch purchases and all kinds of shit. And that's not the reality. That's the lottery ticket. And I commend you for actually playing the lottery and trying to win it. Because there's a lot of people, like I've talked about before, a lot of people that are like, oh, if I could just win the lottery, it'd solve my problems. And then they don't even buy a ticket. Right? But, you know, if you're actually going out there and trying to perform and stuff like that, that's dope. But, my philosophy on performing is, hey, look, when you're first starting out, go and do some of these bars with 20, 25 people in it or whatever, right? Go on. Get you some experience. Learn what doing a show is. Okay? You're going to feel the highs. You're going to feel the lows. And... You're going to be like, oh, okay, okay. So if I do this, then this happens with the crowd, stuff like that, right? You need to learn the crowd. But do some of those shows and just go there with some business cards or some kind of flyer or something like that where, you know, you have the availability that people can purchase your music if they want to, but then bare minimum, they can, they can easily follow you on socials and streaming, okay? If you have a, a business card or one of those little fucking cobwebs if you got a business card or one of those little little tap cards you know what i'm saying it's got an rfid chip in it and you can get people to your link tree or your website preferably a website but we're not gonna talk about that right now but if you can get people to those then they can go and sh follow you on socials and streaming and it's better than going there empty-handed and i've seen so many artists go to shows empty-handed and then at the end of the show, they'll have a couple people come up to them. Hey, well, that was dope, man. Hey, where, where can I find you? What was your name again, right? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, go, you know, follow me on IG at this handle. Or, or oh, over on Instagram, I'm this. Or over on uh, TikTok, I'm this handle. Or over on, the, and, and the first fans are saying, what? Right? Because for one, you don't have brand solidarity, which you should definitely have. They should be like, hey, go follow me everywhere at Harcos Music, right? That's why I added the word music onto all my socials. It's because it just, it helps. But you, you know, you have something like that. Okay, fine. But you definitely need to go with a business card. Once I went with a business card, so the first time I went to a show and performed, I got invited and I went there and... No, sorry, excuse me. I went to a local live show not performing. And I went there and I saw what happened when some people came down from the crowd. And I even, or when people came down from the stage into the crowd, I even went up and talked to a couple artists. I'm like, yo, that was dope, man. Where can I, how can I follow you? And they didn't have their, their, usernames and at handles and all that shit taken care of and it was just a fucking nightmare i could barely fucking follow them right they had to actually take my phone and fucking type in the shit all that stuff like fucking ridiculous and so when i got invited to perform at my first performance i took business cards with me and handed those out to people and it worked pretty well. Okay. It was very simple. People are like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Done deal. But then I realized, I'm like, oh, wait, no, I need to go there with something different. And so I, I, uh, next time I went and performed, I had just put together a five track EP. And I was, the whole, I was, the whole purpose of it was like, hey, I'm going to, give this away in order to get contact information 
for these people and start actually being able to communicate with them on a regular basis via email, stuff like that, right? So I ordered some more business cards. And some of y'all may be thinking, oh man, business cards, man, that's outdated. <sighs> Not so much, all right? It's very, very simple. It's very, very easy to hand somebody a business card, right? But in this specific in instance, on these business cards, it had the QR code and the URL that went to a, one page on my website for that project and that project only. And on the card, it said, hey, download my free EP right here, right? So I went there, I went to the show, and people, after I performed, I actually went around and went to every single person in there. Now this is a small bar, there's about 25, 30 people or whatever, right? So I went around to every single person and I told them, I said, hey, I appreciate you watching me perform and everything like that, you know? And some of them were like, oh yeah, man, that shit was dope, blah, blah, blah. You know, so there's a conversation, right? But bare minimum, I just basically went up to everyone, hey, Appreciate you watching me perform and everything like that. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, I just released a brand new EP. You can get it absolutely free right here. Here's my card. Uh, just go to that website, scan that QR code, either way, and you can get my brand new EP absolutely free. All right, it's some of the songs I performed here tonight. If you like them, you can go right there and you can download them for free right to your phone. And it did pretty well. Like I said, only 25, 30 people in that place, and I ended up getting, I think, like five people to download the album right and so that's pretty good i mean five out of 25 that's some pretty good numbers you know what i'm saying five out of 25 to 30 that's that's a good percentage right i'm a little tired right now it's fucking early in the morning but that math you guys can do the math yourself but what i'm saying is that was all right and i went and i did a couple more shows and then i realized i'm like wait a second i'm going to these shows and sometimes I'm driving three hours away to go and perform for the opportunity in front of these people. And every time I show up, you know, multiple, multiple people in the place are there for other artists. And you can tell because when some artists get on stage, they have some people that will go to the front and be extra enthusiastic about it. But whatever I go, nobody knows who I am. You know what I'm saying? Except for the person who put the show on, right? Or, you know, my dad would always be there too, you know what I'm saying? But there's that. And uh, so I realized, I'm like, wait a second. So I'm going, spending my time, my energy, my gas, which is my money, to go and perform at these shows and nobody knows who I am. And when I'm going to these shows, you know, decent amount of people there are there for other artists. So yeah, they might, you know, check me out as well too. They might enjoy me as well. But this is small venues, dinky ass shit, right? Small little, small little bar and stuff. So I got to think, and I'm like, you know what? What I need to do is I need to build my online profile. I need to build up my profile and my actual fan base, right? And so that's what I try to tell every single artist. This artist that reached me. Uh, that reached out to me the other day me and him were talking and you know i asked him i'm like hey you know, what's one of your biggest barriers in the music industry and he said you know my local area i'm like what do you mean and he's like well you know uh you know go to these shows or whatever and these promoters ain't shit blah 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 and i told him i'm like look man fuck your local area so i just need to move no no you're not listening fuck your local area there is the internet, okay? I don't know if you know about this thing called the internet, all right? But out of eight billion people total on this planet, about four-ish billion are on the internet, okay? So you got half of the planet's population, which is in the billions, which most people couldn't even fathom seeing one billion people standing in front of them. Like, it'd be insane. Okay, you're just talking about like an endless sea of people standing in front of you, if it was a billion people. Okay, I mean, just think about the pictures from MLK's uh, speech on, you know, at the Lincoln Memorial in D.C., right? That was part of like, what, the Million Man March or something like that? Like, it was an endless sea of people, and 
it was not in the tens of millions, right? I think it was single digits, but either way, it it was nowhere. It was a, a, a percent of a billion people, okay? It was nothing. But anyway, so you picture it like that. Well, how many fans does an artist actually need to actually be able to get some growth and start getting income and be able to start going on tours and stuff like that? Well, roughly about 10,000 actual fans, like people who contribute on average at least $5 a month, which is $60 a year to the fans. Because you think about it, you got 10,000 fans. And they spend $5 a month with you. That's $50,000 a month. Okay? Now, I don't know about y'all, but uh, most people, like myself, live off of about $50,000 a year. Okay? So if you're getting $50,000 in one month, bruh. You know what I'm saying? And that's an average, right? But either way, you're talking about... $60 $60 a year times 10,000 people. Okay? That's $600,000 a year. Okay? And that's if 10,000 people give you $5 a month. Okay? I mean, honestly, if those 10,000 people give you $5 a year, you're at $50,000 a year. Now, that will be able to cover your bills and allow you to perform full time, right? So if you get 10,000 people giving you $5 a year, which is nothing, that's easy to get, right? $5 a year from somebody is easy. $5 one time done. Easy shit. You will be able to live comfortably, nothing too crazy, and perform music full time. And that's why I try to tell people, I'm like, look, you have 4 billion people on the internet. About 1 to 2 billion, somewhere in there, like between 1 and 2 billion, speak English. At least as a second language, if not a first, okay? That gives you 10,000 people you need to try to get out of 1 to 2 billion people, okay? We're talking about a fraction of a percent of the people that speak English online is what you need to get, Okay? If you start growing your online presence and you start getting real fans, you will have show promoters start contacting you and offering you money to perform. Sorry, I had a sneeze. Anyway, you will start getting people to contact you and offer you to perform. Hey, look, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm throwing a show in such and such place. Um, I know you're located in such and such It's a bit of a drive and stuff like that, or a bit bit of a flight or whatever. Hey, look, I'll cover your airfare um, and hotel uh, if you come perform, right? Or sometimes they'll be like, hey, we'll cover your expenses and we'll pay you X amount of dollars to perform, right? Stuff like that. Once you start getting that, then it'll actually be worth your time and your effort to go there. And then also, you think about it. You get to the level where you have these active fans and promoters are calling you because they're seeing how you're popping in such and such area or whatever. Maybe, maybe they're just coming, you know, there's a promoter who's coming around. Some big name artist is getting ready to come. Let's say, for instance, let's use me as an example, right? Let's say, let's say I have, you know, a few thousand, you don't have to be 10, right? Let's say one or 2000 really active fans, right? My social media does all right. My streaming platforms do all right, right? And I'm kind of building the noise, right? And so this promoter is coming around to Indiana, right? He's going to be performing in Indianapolis, right? Capital City. And he's put on a show and he's like, all right, I need to find some artists in Indiana to come open for my act, right? And so goes around, starts looking online and stuff like that. And he sees me. Like, oh, okay, cool. Let me hit this guy up. Hit this guy up. Hey, what's up? You know, I'm, I'm doing a show. Uh, I'm the promoter for yada, 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 and uh, they're coming to Indianapolis on blah, blah, blah date. Uh, I'd like you to open. Um, you know, I'll give you a couple hundred bucks to perform. You know, I'll give you 500 bucks to perform, whatever, you know, right? 
Boom. Now I just got one, two, five hundred dollars, somewhere in there, to drive an hour away, perform at a show, and get to perform in front of a bigger artist's fan base. And if I go there with merch and stuff like that, I might be able to capitalize pretty decent off of that. So that's a good opportunity, right? I'm not paying to perform, which is ridiculous, okay? A lot of times, some of these promoters will be out here and they'll be coming around with a big name. And in order to get that big name, they had to pay that big name a decent amount of money to come. And so how are they going to make that back? Well, they can make that back off of ticket sales and stuff like that, right? But another way they make that back is by charging some local cats, you know, a few hundred dollars, maybe thousand dollars to perform, right? And that's just crazy to me. That's just crazy to me. I, I like I said, 20 minutes long, there's a long explanation of me trying to say one thing. Build your online presence, build your fan base to where people are offering to pay you to perform and it's going to be a much better bang for your buck and much better experience for you than trying to go and open for free at a local bar or pay to perform for some mid-level or maybe even a, a high-level artist. It's going to be a much better experience, much better opportunity for you because if you have already done all the steps necessary in order to build up a fan base, an active fan base that's giving you, you know, money every month, you know, whether you got a thousand fans or 10,000 fans and they're giving you a few dollars a month here and there, you're going to have everything in place to where when you get that opportunity to go perform in front of, you know, a bigger name artist's fan base, you're going to be able to capitalize off of that and grow like a motherfucker. All right. So that's the moral of this 22 minute long story. All right. Is build your fan base. Don't worry about what town you're in. Okay. Because that doesn't matter to the internet. Okay. The internet doesn't care how big your town is or how many venues it has. Your internet, the internet cares about what you provide to them when they turn on their phone. You know, I started realizing this a few years back before 2020, right? I started realizing this when I was like 18, 19, somewhere in there. I'm like, look, like I'm going to these shows, I'm seeing hardly anybody turn out. And then when people are there, they're on their phone half the time, right? And I'm not talking about filming the show on their phone. Some of them do. But a lot of them are just, you know, scrolling through Facebook, you know, whatever. And I realized, I'm like, wait, people are on their phone 90% of their waking hours in the day, right? That may be an exaggeration, but you get what I'm saying. People are on the phone most of the day. Fuck, I'm on my phone right now recording this, okay? So if people are always on their phone, why would you not try to be what they're looking at? What they're consuming, you know? Don't just put out a song a month and then promote only that song that month. Put out a song a month, but you're promoting all your music that month. Okay, you're promoting multiple different tracks that month. And then you're also coming to them in videos kind of like this, right? Where you're in your element, it's on brand, you're doing something that you're known for, and you're communicating with your fans. So, you know, go live every once in a while and shit. You know, actually communicate with your fans and shit. Going on podcasts and radio shows, stuff like that, right? And it's not just to sit there and be like, yeah, yeah, check my shit out, check my shit out. No, it's about showing them a deeper side of you. You build that connection with these fans, and they're going to support you. Hell, you might not even be in a situation where you don't have to go perform. Or you might be in a situation where your fans reach out to you and say, Hey, you know, there's a lot of us who started a fan group in our area, and we would like you to come perform. Um, it's not an actual venue, but one of the fans, he has like five acres, and we're gonna go build a stage out there or whatever, and we got zoning from the we we'll get zoning from the city or whatever to be able to do it. Would you like to come? Shit like that. I would much rather have that than be going around to these local bars, 
trying to get some stage time in front of 20 to 30 people. Because doing that will definitely leave you bitching about your local area, talking about how you need to move to a better area. It ain't about where you're from. Hold on, let me say this. It ain't where you're at, it's how you act. 100%.